Well, hi! I know it's been a really long time since I posted a video. Um, sorry, I this is new scenery because I did move. I moved within the last um, couple months. And this is the spare room that we have because now we're in a two-bedroom place, whereas before we were in a one-bedroom place. And, you know, sometimes you lose your stitchy bug. I really lost my filming bug. It just wasn't fulfilling for me at the time and I don't think I was doing a very good job and you know things like that and towards the end of 2018 life was anxiety got me bad I wasn't mentally and emotionally in a really good place so I was just feeling really sad and really down in the dumps you know that's what happens when you have depression and anxiety. It just kind of creeps up on you and it stops you from doing a lot of things. Don't mind the little mess that's back there. I think those are just my shoes in the hallway that's in the front. <laughs> but a lot's changed since, I think it's been a full year since I posted actually. So I got new glasses, I've moved, I've changed jobs. Like a whole bunch has changed since I posted a video like over a year ago. A lot's changed and my collection has actually grown substantially so when I was posting videos about a year ago I was maybe buying a couple patterns a month and they were just digital downloads I wasn't really doing too much except for constantly hunting for my Thomas Kincaid which if you follow me on Instagram you would know I have the full collection now I finally got the last kit that I needed to complete the whole set but today I'm just going to go through my full stash because recently I did, I think it was like the common threaded stitcher thing on Instagram. And it was one of the video, one of the posts was posting about your stash. So I did a quick Instagram story, although it wasn't that quick. It was like five or six of those little bars up at the top. And someone mentioned to me, you should make a video. Just make a floss tube really fast of your entire stash. So this video might be a little bit long, um, but I also am filming on a new phone as opposed to the old crappy camera that I had that I couldn't even see my face. It was awful. I hated that camera. And that was part of why I wasn't posting videos. And I didn't have the space. Now I have this whole extra room that eventually I'm going to revamp. I'm going to put like bookshelves and I'll have a stitchy chair and I'll have a desk. And it'll, it'll be my creative space. Right now it's a total disaster. If I were to flip this camera around you know, you would think, Liz, you're a hoarder. What's your problem? No, these are just things that I want to put on bookshelves or pictures. I just haven't had the time to hang. So let's get started. So we'll start with the basics. I think that's, that's okay. Which is for me, my Thomas Kincaid Disney kits. So I ended up in the move finding all my old patterns. I thought I had lost them. I thought they were gone. So here's my Pinocchio. This was the very first Thomas Kincaid kit I ever did. It got ripped up by a puppy. Can you see that? Yeah, I was mad. Thank heavens I had already done that part. So I didn't need that pattern. But this was the very first Thomas Kincaid I ever did. Um, I'll, I'll possibly try and post a picture of the finished one somewhere in here if I feel like editing. I'm not sure if I do because that takes a lot of time. All right, moving on. The next one I did was Snow White. So I finished that one. Here's the pattern. I Like I said, I keep all my floss. I keep my floss. I don't know why, but especially now that MCG Textiles is gone, I'm really glad I kept all my floss. I know I've said that in a previous video. Then the next one I made was Cinderella. So I still have that one. I still have the pattern. You can see my patterns get beat up. So when people ask me, hey, can I have your old ones? You can't read what's on here. Like you can try, but these are going to fall apart and they're, they've got all my notes. And as my mother would say, they are loved. <laughs> That's the term that she would use. So there's that one. Then the last one that I did, which I finished a year over a year ago was the Lady and the Tramp, which is the one I dedicate for me and my husband. And I'm really excited because you've got the Disney Plus streaming service coming up soon. And there's a live action Lady and the Tramp movie. I haven't really been a big fan of all these live action remakes. Aladdin, Cinderella was fun. 
Jungle Book was fun, but then after that, I kind of got really bored with them. But The Lady and the Tramp live action, I'm really, really excited for because that's the movie that my husband and I cherish. Oh, and if you are wondering, I did get my nails. I've been getting my nails done for over a year now. It's just something that I do to take care of myself. It's something that makes me feel good about myself. And stitching, surprisingly, is not that hard, especially when you get the points like this. Yes, they are Halloween themed. And the green ones, yellow ones, they glow in the dark. It scared me the first time. <laughs> I couldn't figure out what that light was as I was closing my eyes. I'm like, oh, it's just my nails. It's just my nails. <laughs> Um, but it's something that's been really helping me. It's something that, you know, I take care of myself and I do this for me and I do budget for it and I love getting my nails done and I get them done every month now. So it's just a little thing I do for myself. And then of course I'm working on Little Mermaid. I think that's in my bedroom hiding somewhere. I don't know where it is. Now other kits that I have, let's go more towards I have a whole Rubbermaid container, like those big silver ones, over here to my right. So now we're going to move on to um, all my other Thomas Kincaid Disney ones. So then, I will leave that for last. I have the Sleeping Beauty kit. And I've mentioned in the past that the picture does not do, sorry, my landlord is mowing her lawn. <laughs> I live in the basement. Um, the picture doesn't do it justice. It looks really dark, but when I've seen other people finish it, it's really bright and really pretty. And I kind of didn't want to do this one until I saw other people doing it. The colors are gorgeous. I forgot this one that's hiding back here. So this one is one that is one of my mom's favorites. This is Bambi. I am actually really excited to do this one eventually because I know that there's a sparkly rainbow here at the bottom. I'm kind of excited. Is anybody else like that where they see certain parts of a cross stitch kit and you're like, um, or a pattern? I can't wait to do those colors. I can't wait to do that section. And I'll leave that part for last because it's my favorite part. Is that just me? I know I'm a bit of a nerd, but that could just be me. Then here's Peter Pan. Um, I'm not too excited to do this one either just because it's so much blue. That's a lot of blue. And this just looks like confetti stitching central it makes me want to cry honestly this is probably the last one I'll ever do I won't lie it doesn't look like fun to me and what disappoints me about that is that Peter Pan is my favorite story I love the live action versions I love almost every version I've ever seen of Peter Pan musical with Mary Martin I saw it with Kathy Rigby when I lived in Ohio like this was a disappointment. I'll still do it, of course. I mean, come on. I collected them all to do them for a reason. I'm not a hoarder just to hoard them. I'm going to make them all. Lion King. This is the next one. Now, I don't like Lion King. I did as a kid, but the older I've gotten, the less I like it because I cry. However, now this is the opposite effect. I don't like the story, but I can't wait to do this kit. Those purples and those yellows, all the different animals at the bottom. I can't wait to do this one. I think this one's going to be so much fun to do. Then I have the first Beauty and the Beast. Sorry, it's in here because I had to get a needle. <laughs> Back before I stashed all my needles, I was like, oh, I'll just open one of my other kits and I'll steal a needle from there. Anybody else do that? So here's just the first Beauty and the Beast, Beauty and the Beast Falling in Love. This one I actually bought at Hobby Lobby back when these were still made. eBay, I, from just so you know, I got Lion King, Peter Pan from eBay. Bambi I got as a present, I think, from my mom. Obviously Snow White and Pinocchio I bought when they were still in production. Lady and the Tramp was a Christmas present when they were still in production. But now we're getting into the kits that I had to get afterwards after they had shut their doors. <laughs> then Fantasia. So this I have been worried about because it's on even weave. Sorry, it's a little open, but I don't know if you can see that. See, this is on even weave. It's not on the normal fabric that I've been using since I was eight years old. So I've been really nervous about it. And so what I've been doing lately is I've been doing small pieces on 28 count linen just to get myself used to it. Cause it's hard for me to count the spaces because you have to leave a hole in between each. Instead of cross stitching every single hole, you're skipping one. And that's hard when you've been doing it one way for almost 25 years. So I was really nervous. I thought I was gonna switch it out to Aida. I'm not going to now because I've been practicing and I've been getting really good on linen. I got that one off eBay too. That one, I, I 
snuck in just as I had found out and I didn't have to pay very much. Winnie the Pooh, again, this one is also on Even Weave. I found this one on Amazon. I snatched this up for only $50. I've seen this one go for like $300 on eBay. Holy mackerel, that's crazy. Um, but this one is also, I don't know if you can see, is also Even Weave. So, but I really wanna do this one. I love Winnie the Pooh. He's, I just love Pooh Bear. I do, I really do, I can't help myself. And then the last one, the Pièce de Ristance, was Beauty and the Beast 2. This is probably the hardest kit to find. I do have Tangled, I just have the pattern. I don't have the kit, but, so I do have all of them. I will make all of them. But this was the last one for me to be able to find. So Tangled is the hardest one to find because even I don't have the kit. But this one, again, I have it because I wanted the collection and I am excited to make it, but it's not on like, I'm excited to make Fantasia. I'm excited to make Lion King. Not one of the ones I'm excited to make because I don't like all the colors. I wish they were a little bit more vibrant. There's a lot of green and a lot of red. So, but nevertheless, I have it and that's what matters. And I will complete them all before I die. I'm determined. <laughs> so let's see if I can find, I think this is, <clears throat> excuse me. Yeah, so this is the Tangled pattern. I have it, it's used, it was someone else's. So I have the pattern but I don't have the kit. And I kick myself sometimes because I saw this in Hobby Lobby before MCG Textiles closed their doors. I don't know if you can really tell there. And oh, I, I walked past it so many times and I wanted it every single time I saw it because it's got these beautiful purples and oh, I'm just so mad at myself for not buying it. I know there's no way I could have known. Still, I'm mad at myself for never being able to find it. So those are all my Thomas Kincaid ones. Like I said, my Little Mermaid one is off somewhere. I think it's in my one of my stitchy bags. Cause I'll pick it up for a couple months and then I'll set it down and then I'll pick it up and I'll, you know, I never used to do that before, by the way. My mom did not teach me to do that. It was, you never start another one until you finish the one you're on. Well, I had been doing these Thomas Kincaid ones for collectively, I would say about seven years. I needed a break and I've pretty much taken this whole past year and and taken a break on the Thomas and K kids and I've made a lot in this past year I don't know if you follow me on Instagram but I've made a lot in the past year and it's been a lot of fun to get that many finished under my belt I'm used to doing these really big projects that are really complicated you know what sometimes it's nice to do a small project that takes you only three days or a week or it doesn't take very long so it's kind of nice now, the other Disney kits that I have that I'm kind of in the middle of collecting, but I won't be heartbroken if I don't get them all, are the ones that were only sold at the parks. So they're usually called like the Art of Disney or something like that. So the first one I have is one that I know a lot of people want. I lucked out. A very good friend of mine found it for me and she found a deal. So this is, I think it's called like Past, Past present and forever or something. It's a Stony Creek one. You can see there's like Mickey and Walt at the bottom. It's got some green fabric and um, it's got like these sparkling threads. So I did get this one. So I'm excited that I got this one. Um, there's I think about three or four different castle ones. So that's one of the ones that I have. And then I have the wedding one. This one's really cute. I love this one. I think this one's a lot of fun. I'm excited to make this one. Then I have, um, then this is one where it's that copy of the Norman Rockwell painting. So it's Mickey painting Walt. I think that one's a lot of fun. And I have a couple more on their way um, shipping to me or they're, cause I ship everything to my parents' house because they're always home. I don't have to worry about it getting lost or stolen. So I have the, tink there's a Tinkerbell, there's two Tinkerbell ones actually. So there's one where she's like dusting all the flowers. That one is, should be on its way to my mom, the dad's. I'll try and edit a picture in. Oh, come on, I'm gonna have to edit. And then there's another one where Tinkerbell is like, she's got her little wand and she's touching the castle and that's a really fun one. I almost won the 35th anniversary one. That's the one I really, really want. It's like this picture of a trolley and you've got all the main characters and it's on, I think either black or navy blue, 
fabric. I want that one so bad. And then there's another castle one that I want really, really bad. Now I know there's another castle one that everybody loves that I am so lucky I got. I have the pattern. So this is a Thomas Kincaid one. It was made by Stony Creek and it's gorgeous. And someone didn't want their fabric, another friend of mine, so she sent me the fabric. So I at least have the fabric and I have the pattern. All I have to do is buy the floss. Um, I'm not heartbroken about that because it's DMC floss. I can find DMC floss and my DMC floss collection is getting really big. I'll show that in this, because this is a stash video, right? So I'm gonna show you my stash. So those are all my really big, oh yeah, and then I have this small little vignette because this vignette is different. I have too many. This vignette is different from the big Winnie the Pooh. See? So I'm glad I have this one. And there's two, I think there's one other vignette that I kind of want where it's Christopher Robin in an umbrella that again is different because he's holding Pooh up here in this one. So. The Winnie the Pooh vignettes were actually different than the big pictures because all the other vignettes look like just a little cutout from the big picture. So I didn't want them. I didn't care about them. I'm more happy with the big ones. All right. So that covers all my Disney big kits. Now we'll just move on to the other stuff that um, I found while I was moving. Some of this stuff I didn't even know I had. That's bad, right? <laughs> So I, if anybody that knows me really well, I love Coca-Cola. I, I didn't even know I had this one. I'm really excited because you know what? I don't think there's a lot of good Christmas patterns out there. I love Halloween. I have tons of Halloween patterns, um, but there's just not a lot of cute Christmas in my opinion. I don't know if maybe it's because I don't really like the color red, which does slight problems since that's what's in most of you know Christmas kits. But this one I thought was really, really, really cute. So I'm glad I have that one. I love Coca-Cola. I love the little dog in the corner. I'm excited to make that one. Then I didn't even know, again, another one I didn't even know I had. So this is a Dimensions Gold Collection Kit. Alan Maley's Gracious Era. This one, I love the Victorian era. I think that's why I got this one because I love the Victorian era. And this just looks like, to me, Charles Dickens Christmas. Like that's what that reminds me of. I love that one. Then I have this little Disney Winnie the Pooh. So it's a smaller Disney kit. Okay, sue me, it's a Disney kit. I have another Disney Haunted Halloween house. I don't know where it is though. Probably in my room, because I wanted to make it this Halloween, but that's not gonna happen. Because Halloween's like eight days away. <laughs> but this one's really cute. Um, very simple. I think that one's gonna be fun to make. Then I got this one. This is a Dimensions kit because I want it to go with, I have another Dimensions kit that is like a bicycle that says Fleur and they kind of look like they would match next to one another. So, and I already finished that one. I finished that one years ago and I just saw this one and I thought it was perfect to go with that one that I have. Then this one I got because my mom loves pansies. I got it from some Etsy shop, she's from Russia. Obviously that's the Cyrillic elf. I can't pronounce, I don't speak Russian, sorry. Um, but this one I'm gonna make for my mom. She loves pansies and I love the colors. I love the purples and the greens and it's so well put together. I'm actually excited to make this one. So I'm planning on making this one in the spring. Mom, did you hear that? I'm making this one in the spring. She'll be really happy. Okay, then let's move on to some other Dimensions kits. This one. This is the floral market, Paris market. I love French, can you tell? I like anything French. Disney and French. Those are like my two common themes that I absolutely love. So this one I'm excited to make. I love all the colors, although that looks like a lot of confetti stitching. I don't know what I got myself into on that one. And here's another one. Now my friend Christine recently finished this one. Again, I didn't even know I had either one of these. <laughs> That sounds so bad until I moved. Um, Cause I think these look 
Like they'd be really cute. See, look, look at that. That looks like a cute little side-by-side -side moment, right? And there's quite a few other dimensions kits that I want. There's the ones that are the three seasonal fairies. So like the autumn fairy, the winter fairy, and the spring fairy. The spring one I saw and I want it so bad. It's so gorgeous. Every time I walk past it at Hobby Lobby, I can hear it screaming to me, buy me, buy me. And my mom always says, if it screams at you, you need to buy it. But I've been buying a lot of other things and I know that kit will always be there. Although that's what I said about the Thomas Kincaid. So maybe I should just go out and buy it when I get paid next. What do you guys think? Um, so the other stuff that I have in my little box of wonders are, well, these are just little kits that I inherited from my mom. Nothing too exciting. I don't know if I'll ever do any of them. Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> but I have them. Say lovey. All right, so let's put all those away because my mother taught me to clean up as I go. We must stay clean. Oh, I have other little things called cruel. So it's another type of embroidery. It was really popular in the 70s. And so you use like yarn and uh, it's got a pattern stamped on there. I love them. They are like, I think they're just cheesy in 70s. And for some reason, they just call to my heart. I want them. And they're really cheap. Like when you find one for only $6, I mean, it's really hard to pass up. And my mom has some really big ones that she's done that I love and I probably will inherit her finished ones, you know. So, okay, putting all these away. So now I'm going to move on to um, stuff that... I have digital downloads of and ever since last year when I discovered hey you can download digital patterns ever since I discovered that I have a massive wish list most of which is the witchy stitcher I'm sure if any of you know me you know that already <laughs> and I've made quite a few of her patterns I absolutely love her shop I love that it's not this typical bright happy stuff it's it's different. It's not the type of stuff that you see in cross stitch ever. And so I love it and I want it all. So I am a fan of having, sorry. Oh, see, look, here's a cute little pansy one that I'm going to make for my mom. Actually, I think she already has that one. So this is Big Bertha. And this isn't even all my patterns. I have a lot that are digitally um saved on my computer but I haven't printed them yet because I need to go buy a printer I like having a hard copy I know sometimes I'll use a digital copy when I'm in a bind but I really like having a hard copy I don't know if it's because I like to write on it I like to mark on it and I don't use highlighters I don't use pens I use colored pencils which I don't know where my colored pencils are but when I'm marking things off, I use colored pencils. That way I know exactly where I've been and what's been finished and colored pencils won't ruin fabric. Pro tip. So I know a lot of people use highlighters and I've seen it all the time where they get highlighter on their fabric or they get ink on their fabric. Don't use pens, don't use highlighters. You won't get that stuff on your fabric. Use colored pencils. Seriously, it's the best way to go about it because you're not gonna ruin your fabric. And if you do, I use the Crayola washables because I have, on a very rare occasion, I have gotten some colored pencil on my fabric because it got wet or something. I don't really remember. But because it's washable, it came out and I didn't have to worry about it. Anyway, sorry, that was a long tangent. So I have this beautiful big binder of patterns. I feel like I'm in like, you know when you were a kid and you were at the library and uh, they had they were did like those read story times? That's what I'm doing. <laughs> so you can see in this little pocket right here, I have this. That was the tiny modernist. Maybe I'll edit a picture in here because that's down at my mom's. She's pressed it and cleaned it. That was the Lakeside Needlecraft and Tiny Modernist collab of the cute little castle. I, I finished that one at the beginning of this year. I was watching Game of Thrones when I watched it and I bought a whole bunch of Game of Thrones patterns that I have yet to print out. <laughs> They're all the house banners, so I'm really excited. I plan on doing those on linen, so that's gonna be a challenge. And then the next one, so I have these in by designer. So 
My first designer that I have in here is the Witchy Stitcher. And this was her Universal... Okay, I don't know if you can hear me. This was the Universal Monster Stitch Along that she recently did. And I had an absolute blast um, making it. It was so much fun. Um, I really, I, I know she's going to have another stitch along coming out soon. I am so, so, so excited. But here is my finished product of, and I dyed my own fabric. So I dyed it like a purple and a green. And I did all kinds of my own little touches to it. So I added a purple moon and it's all the etoile. Etoile, however you want to pronounce it. Can you see? Oh, look at that sparkle. Oh, look how gorgeous that is. And then I did a variegated floss here and the windows sparkle. I found this Rainbow Galleries floss that was this bright yellow that had like a golden leaf type floss. Kreinrich, I can't pronounce that. Weaved in there. Of course, all my ghosts glow in the dark. Okay. And then we move down to the room. So this I used, the Swamp Creature was actually satin floss. I used the Etoile floss for the water for the creature. The fireflies light up and then this little fish down here lights up. Fan of the Opera, so I've got light effects in there. I've got Etoile, I've got, then I use the satin floss and the curtains. Then we've got Frankenstein and these lightning bolts. This is a rainbow gallery floss as well. This is yellow and sparkly and it glows in the dark. Triple effect. I literally squealed when I found that. That couldn't have been more perfect and then you know, my rationale between uh, why my Frank Frankenstein sparkles, you know what, if in Twilight we can have sparkly vampires, why can't I have a sparkly Frankenstein? It's my world, okay? So that's why I did that. <laughs> then we moved down to the Bride of Frankenstein and I did change this one up a little bit. So I added another tower in here, then her desk or her vanity. So this is all the sparkly etoile floss. Then you've got light effects. This is etoile. Etoile, I can't pronounce that right. And then again, hers is a rainbow gallery and it's white and it's sparkly. Let's see, can we get it in there? I think it's working. All right, then we move to the mummy. I love my mummy. I changed it up a little bit because this was supposed to, like this blue here is actually supposed to be brown, but I liked the blue more, a royal blue. And of course that's all sparkly. Oh, her dress glows in the dark. Plus my mummy glows in the dark and I added a little bit of green and the edges to make him look moldy. Cause I mean, he's a mummy, he's been dead, he's dead. And yes, I know, I understand mummies aren't moldy because that's the whole purpose of mummification. Don't come at me, it was just my little creative brain. I like it, it's mine. All right, then we have the Invisible Man and I got a lot of sparkles in here. So I gave him like a smoking jacket cause I don't feel like he would be wearing his trench coat um, inside his own home in his lab. Now this is actually, the pattern had a trench coat. Um, I did not do a trench coat. And he also sparkles and glows in the dark. Then we use some light effects here for some of the potions. See how you can see, oh, I just love sparkles. The skull, I think the skull glows in the dark. This cute little painting up at the top. And then you can see the water leaking down from the creature's room, so cute. And then at the very bottom, we have Dracula. And of course I've got, you can see the light effects on his coffin. And here I found light of uh, Rainbow Gallery velvet floss. So it has this velvety texture in his cape. So exciting. Then here we have the Wolfman. I added some trees because there were not trees in the pattern. The, the moon here is also sparkly and I found fuzzy floss. So my Wolfman is fuzzy. Again, that's Rainbow Gallery. So I've learned I like Rainbow Gallery because they have all these really fun um, textured threads that DMC doesn't carry. But don't don't get me wrong, I still love my DMC. And then I have Vincent Price and the Witch Door, and I added a little pentacle right here on the on the the cauldron. And of course, these glow in the dark, and the door sparkles. So, and this is satin floss at the bottom for the steps. And then here, I also used the sparkly floss on the bats. So that was the Witchy Stitchers um, Universal Monster Sal. I loved this. I think it was so fun. I can't wait to get this framed. Obviously it's still, I still have the masking tape on the edges. So I still have a lot to do with that one. I wanna get this one nicely framed. Anyway, sorry, that was quite the tangent. Our video is already up to like a half hour. This is crazy. So I have that one. 
And then I have, she has all these fun, iconic, scary houses. And she's got three of them. And I want to make them kind of as a set. I have it in my head. I love sets and series. Those are my favorites. So this is the, I think this is the Amityville house. Yes. So this is the Amityville house. And we've got the Lizzie Borden house. And the Bates house. So I'm really excited to make all three of those and put those up together as like a set. Uh, Trick or Treat. This is one of my favorite um, and uh, Halloween movies. It's a different one. It's kind of a cult classic. This one's fun. I'm excited. My husband's actually really excited for this one. This one, I love Back to the Future, and this helped with the Fox Foundation. I was really, I bought this one as soon as I saw it come out, even though I haven't had a chance to make it. Then this one, this is what I'll make for Christmas. So now, remember for Christmas, season's greetings. Hello. <laughs> the Ouija board. I've made this one for my sister, and I need to make one for me. Welcome, foolish mortals. If you know me, you know I love anything Haunted Mansion. Oh, gosh. I just eat it up. Then we have Sweet Dreams, which if you watched my last video, which was forever ago, I was working on that one, and I have since finished it, and put it in a little frame myself. Obviously, this is a frame myself. You can still see the wrinkles from my hoop. I'm aware. I just wanted to get it framed and up. And I bought this frame at Hobby Lobby. It just pops out. It's like $3. Like it's totally worth it for something this small. And it just goes in one of my bookshelves. And then the next one I have, sorry, you saw my camera fell. <laughs> it's sitting on a basket right now. Then here we have Captain Spaulding and R.I.P. Sid Haig. Um, if you've ever watched the movie Ten, uh, House of a Thousand Corpses, it's one of my husband's favorite. He loves Rob Zombie. Um, so it makes me kind of sad, but you know what? I have this great pattern and I finished this one as well. And I dyed my own fabric on this one. My husband loves this. <laughs> I love the little <laughs> the chicken on the side. This was a lot of fun to make. I And I this was the first time I had tried making fabric kind of look moldy and weird and dark and that was fun this was and my husband loves this one he really really does so that one i've obviously framed myself too that was not professionally done i can't professionally frame it all so then we move on to oh this one is bride of chucky another one of my husband's favorite he loves horror movies and i like them too not as much as he does but i do love making these so i finished this one as well this was one Oh gosh, I love her eye, Tiffany's eye. Oh gosh, can you just look at the colors on that? That is so much fun. Obviously, I did a quick frame on this because it is crooked. <laughs> Good job, Liz. Um, this one I made because my husband and I, we do, Bride of Chucky is my favorite in the Child Play series because it's dark and it's funny all at the same time. It's a really, really good one. I love Bride of Chucky. And, um, when I spoke to, I had asked Meg um, of the Witchy Stitcher if she had one, and then she whipped this one up, and oh gosh, I just, I love this, love this one. This one's so much fun. Okay, so we've made that one. Then I just finished this one. So this is the Grady Twins. Um, the Shining is probably my all-time favorite horror movie. I love Stephen King and I love The Shining. I'm trying to read the book, but oh man, those books are big. <laughs> I'd rather be stitching. <laughs> and audiobooks, I need to have something visual when I'm stitching. But this is one if you saw, and again, I'll try and post a picture. I made my own bloody looking fabric. That was something I tried for the first time. I got fabric paint, watered it down, got a straw and like blew through the straw and then like whacked it around and I got it to look like all these blood splatters. So it looks really, really cool and it's perfect for this kind. I mean, obviously it's the shining. Hello. All right, so that's all I have printed for the Witchy Stitcher. That doesn't mean that's all I have. I have so many more first I need to download. <laughs> then Good Morning Maui. Oh gosh, this was the Haunted Mansion, the stretching portraits. I made this one and I was so excited to make this one, but do you ever have those patterns where you're excited to make them and then halfway through making them, you're like, I am so over this. <laughs> I don't want to make this anymore. I don't even like this one anymore. So I gave it away. I gave it to a friend who just got married and um, she just bought a house. So hopefully she'll put that up and enjoy that in her house. Who wants the redhead? Hello. I love that one. Um, Ralphie from A Christmas Story. 
Bob Ross. I love Bob Ross. That's like a spring. I'll probably make that in like the spring. That's what that feels like to me. That's a spring pattern. Then you've got Willy Wonka. So cute. Edgar Allan Poe. I've asked for Good Morning Ma Maui to make a Vincent Price one because I would love to have Vincent Price and Edgar Allan Poe right next to one another. I love these two. Then we have Mr. Rogers. Is anybody else going to see that movie with Tom Hanks as Mr. Rogers? I know I'm really excited. Won't you be my neighbor? Okay, then this one I've made and I gave it away. It was the Hocus Pocus one. And it was one of the first times I ever dyed my own fabric and I dyed it green and it was gorgeous. I need to make that one for myself now. Then we've got the Hitchhiking Ghosts. Again, one of the ones that I made and I gave away. But I also made one for myself and... Um, I dyed that fabric like blue and purple and I have the one that I made uh, up at my desk at work Then I have a whole bunch by um, creatively crafting or crafty. She has all these fun ribbon Disney themed ones. There's a lot and then the stained glass ones just carab. It's my favorite Hello, and I have a lot that I still need to print out. There's so so many that I need to print out holy cow I mean, look at these. They're gorgeous. I don't know when I'll ever get around to them, but they are absolutely gorgeous. And then at the very back, I have some of my Heaven and Earth designs. I love Randall Spangler. So that's the mini tea afternoon. That picture is really tiny. And I've got a bunch of others, but that binder is really heavy and starting to hurt my arm. <laughs> so we're going to put, we're going to put her over there. Um, then I have... Oh, and then I'll show you this one. I have this pattern, but I didn't print it off. This is one I actually did digitally because I wanted to do it so bad. I dyed this fabric teal, and I love Tales from the Crypt. I wasn't allowed to watch it as a kid, and the Crypt Keeper actually scared me when I was a kid. But, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. This one, I squealed when I saw the Witchy Stitcher release this one. I couldn't believe it. I was so excited. My husband and I love watching Crypt, uh, Tales from the Crypt, and then I dyed it, as you can see, this kind of teal color, because what I love about the cases is that they're all these fun colors amongst this dark, like these dark tails, and I love the little spiders in, this, in the spider webs. Oh, hi, you can see me in the reflection. <laughs> and I framed that one, too. Oh, this one was, and I made this one in like a week. I was really surprised. This one did not take me very long. My Grady Twins one only took me three days. I did that one in three days. Very impressed with myself, by the way. And I have another tiny little binder. This is what I started with before I knew I needed to go to Big Bertha. <laughs> so this one has just kind of some random stuff. So it has this Beauty and the Beast one. This was one I did as a wedding present. I finished that one. I gave that away. I've got these fun Harry Potter ones. So the Deathly Hallows. I think there's like a sorting hat. There's like three or four patterns in there. I've got a Tilton Crafts. And I've got a few Tilton Crafts that I have yet to print off. I've got the Hocus Pocus one. I've got Jareth the Goblin King. And I think there's one other one. But I can't remember. Oh, look here that is. So here's the full one, the Medieval Mansion. This was fun. I added a lot of sparkle to mine, um, pretty much everywhere I could. And I had just bought the Etoile Floss. So I used a lot of it here and a lot of light effects. That was a lot of fun to make. Oh, this was the Tiny Modernist, um, the first stitch along I ever did. And this one, I did my own finishing touches to this one too. If I can find a picture, I'll post it in here. But this one, this was a lot of fun too. When are they not fun? Except for my one haunted mansion. So I have this Merry Christmas. I don't have a lot of Christmas, guys. If you guys can find, and I don't like primitive style, as you can see. All of this stuff is very modern style or it's very detailed. I know there's a lot of Christmas that are the primitive style or like when I look at it, I think of colonial times. <laughs> um, I'm just not a fan of that style. It's not my favorite. I'm slowly getting into some but they're not my favorite, and I've noticed that a lot of the Christmas stuff is primitive style, and I don't like it. Um, this is a little star, rainbow star. I made that for my sister because she loves rainbows. She absolutely loves rainbows. My mom always called her her rainbow child, so I made that for her, and that took me like a week. It was the last pattern I had ever finished of 2018. I finished it on July, Jan, or December 31st. So now I've got a new designer that I'm just 
Oh, I've got actually two. There's two designers that right now I want everything they make. <laughs> like everything, okay? So the first one is hands-on designs. Oh my gosh, guys, I love everything that sh that hands-on designs comes out with. I Oh, look, I found it. So here's my Disney Halloween. Sorry. Hi. Have you met me? This is really cute. It's a Disney art catalog. Sorry, hi, I'm peeking in the corner. I'm really excited to make that one. That was, this is a cute one. I'm excited. Anyway, back to hands-on designs. So hands-on designs, this is as close to primitive as I think I'll get. That, and I think there's a few, I think it's called Cricut, where they've got the four different seasons and all the months. That's as close to primitive as I will probably ever purchase. Um, but they're not really, they're not really primitive, you know. It, I just don't like that style. It's just not me. But I got the whole Scary Apothecary series. I cannot wait to make these. This is what I'm going to be making after I'm finished with the product, the project I'm on now. So here we've got Bat Balm. Then we've got Bitter Brew. Oh my gosh, can you stand it? These are so cute. Then there's Broomstick Fuel. And Crackle cackle lozenges so cute i have a cackle too so those are perfect for me then we've got coffin paint i think this one's gonna be a lot of fun to make then cauldron cleaner and the cute little two kitties on there snail slime this one i'm excited to make i love the purple and the green and the orange and oh so fun spider legs and then skeleton polish i'm really excited to make all of those and these are ones that i'm actually going to make on linen this is a designer I'm going to branch out and a wonderful friend of mine who I get all these from um, she has her own shop it's called JT stitching corner and I'll post a link to her shop in the description below but she also got me fabric so I'm gonna do these on linen it's kind of this fun little taupey color and she did all the edges for me so I don't have to tape them up I've got a whole bunch more stuff coming from her. I'm really, really, really excited to get started on these. And I bar I started buying all my Kreinrich and I will be using DMC floss. I know there's specialty floss that you can buy for her, but from what I understand, it goes out of stock a lot and I don't feel like waiting. I'm not very patient. <laughs> I want to do them now. <laughs> um, other patterns that I have by Hands On Design. So this is adorable, hello all 12 months of the year and she even has Canada ones. Now I'm from the US so I'll be doing my July and my November but these are so stinking cute and I'll probably be doing these on like not I don't like that burlap color but maybe another taupey color. Now hands-on design has this whole chalk series and I want every one of them. I love them all so much. I love I like working on dark fabric. I don't understand why people don't like working on dark fabric because to me, dark fabric makes everything pop, makes everything look so beautiful. I love how dark fabric looks. I will use dark gray. I will use navy blue. I've worked on black. I'm not afraid to work on dark fabric. I don't understand why people don't like it, but I love it. So she has this whole chalk series and my friend Jessica and I have been looking, I think she found the perfect fabric for me because she's, she's a whiz at all this. Like she's so smart and she knows so much about all the different fabrics and she's been helping me out so much. Although she is kind of my drug dealer because I find all these patterns and she's like, oh, I have that one in my shop. I can get that for you. I'm like, oh, okay, here you go. Take my money. <laughs> so there's this one that's Carrot Farms. I, I Look at that. Just look how cute that is with all those colors. Oh, I can't. I just, I can't hold it in. And then we've got an autumn home and we've got this tulip house and the one that caught this was the very first one that caught my eye that i discovered i loved hands-on designs is this rose one rose cottage are you kidding me hello gorgeous and there's a whole bunch more that i'm going to be getting like there's a whole bunch i think there's chalk christmas ones that i'm going to get there's one that's of the home series that has um like snowmen so it's gonna be those and then there's a whole bunch more of the farms and she like the farm so there's all these different farms there's like a fourth of july one i think there's a spring one there's one with cows there's a like there's so many and i cannot wait to get my hands on all of them and honestly i bet these would take me two to three months a piece they wouldn't take me that long i don't think and that's why i'm like just give me more give me more so those are all my hands-on designs 
at the moment. <laughs> that collection for sure is going to grow. And the other one that's going to grow, hands down I know is going to grow, is Glendon Place. I discovered Glendon Place and this, all of these patterns sing to my heart. And I've got a wish list of about five more that I want. But the first one that I saw that I, again, my mom told me if it screams to you, you have to get it. So this one's called Spooktown Square. Come on, are you serious? so stinking cute and it's a four part series so this is the middle part and then you've got part do i have these in order oh thank heavens okay part two so there's a jail and there's a barber shop and i can't i can't i just they're so cute part three i love the the sin ima how oh, it starts with the s instead of a c i love puns okay and then we've got part four and I love this, the creepy confections. Now this is what it'll look like when it's all done. I can't, oh my gosh, guys, it just makes my heart sing. I've literally had dreams about making this one. I, I dream about cross-stitching. <laughs> do I have a problem? I love cross-stitch, maybe a little too much, but I really love it. And then I have two more Glendon at the, Glendon Place ones that I have and then there's a whole bunch more that I want. So this one is called the Phantom Plantation. This reminds me of the Haunted Mansion. Hello. I don't like the white fabric. I won't do it on the white fabric. I'll probably do something that's maybe on like a light purplish color. I'm not sure yet, but I'm not I don't like it on the white, but I absolutely love this. Hello. This completely looks like the Haunted Mansion totally looks like the Haunted Mansion to me. And then this one's the Murky Manor. How cute is this? And then these are little skull beads. I, I'm so excited. And then there's the Headless Horseman one. So Sleepy Hollow, that's what I'm gonna buy next because I really wanna make that one. Then, <clears throat> excuse me, I also recently bought one that was like Harvest Time because I don't have any Thanksgiving patterns, I realized. Like I don't have any because there really aren't that many and they have a cute one. Then there's like this creepy school one. There's like a ghost school, a ghost train. So that's, and then there's this really cute Christmas gingerbread village type one that I want. And then there's a creepy castle one. So I think that's about five. I didn't count, sorry. Um, that I can't wait to get and I probably will get. Now I also have the cross stitch magazines. I just got these. Again, my friend Jessica helped me get these. Thank you very much, JT Stitching Corner. So now I'm getting to the project that I'm working on. So this is Mill Hill. And I did my first Mill Hill kit, I would say two, three months ago, maybe. It was a curly girl design. And it was my first thing I'd ever done on linen. It was the first thing I'd ever, ever, ever done on linen. I've never done anything on linen before that. And I had a blast. I loved it. I figured out linen's really not that bad. You just have to learn how to count and practice. And it was my first time using beads. So that was so much fun for me. Now this comes with perforated paper. I'm not going to use perforated paper. That kind of scares me. So I went out and bought navy fabric. And this is what I'm working on right now, guys. Is that upside down? Yeah, that was upside down. <laughs> so this is what I'm working on. Sorry, that's my Goosebumps needle minder. Yes, I am a children. I am a child of the 90s. I was born in the 80s, raised in the 90s. My husband and I both loved Goosebumps. We're going to get all the books again. I had them all at one point. I think he had them all at one point and then they're gone. Now we got to collect them all again. But the colors. Like look at this this pink color and the orange and the purple. This one's called Wanda's Wands. And she's got a whole like Mill Hill has a whole bunch of these kind of Halloween type buildings that you can probably just make a whole village out of. So you know I'm gonna be getting all those. <laughs> There's no way I'm not. So, but this is the one I'm working on. I'm, I bet I could get this done within the next couple of days. I bet I'll have this done before Halloween. And then what I've done is, cause it comes with beads, but they just come in little baggies. So I found this little cute, it's not a pill container. I know some of you might be thinking that. But I found this at Joann's for like a like two dollars and it has this little thing right here at the top so you can open it up and I separated all my beads by color so this I thought was a pretty smart idea to separate all my beads I like that sound 
So that's what I'm working on at the moment. I'll probably have it done pretty soon. Um, and then just a quick, I'll just go over like my quick stash that I have. I do have some fun fabrics. Like I have this opalescent fabric. I have some silver and I have gold. Like I'm not gonna get color sparkly. Like, come on, I'm gonna have sparkly fabric. It's just who I am, I can't help it. <laughs> and then I have this huge tube of black fabric. I told you, I'm not afraid of black fabric and I don't understand why people are. I don't get it. Um, but that's, I don't have a ton of fabric. I really need to grow my fabric. Because uh, obviously I have a lot of kits, which means I need to make a lot. Oh, and by the way, all of that's like 14. Yeah, that's not anything crazy. And then recently I bought a... So these are called art bins. Again, I got these at Joann's and I had to buy a second one because my floss, <laughs> you ready? Let's see if I can get this way. My floss collection has grown. So I keep all mine and I do floss baggies. I love how the underside looks. So yeah, I had to get a second one because it got too full. <laughs> And I keep all my floss in these things, every single one of them that I'm not using at the moment. And I love my little baggies that I keep everything in, I have them all numbered, and they're all in numerical order. I don't do rainbow order, I do numerical order because it's easier for me to find when I'm making another kit. And then these are all my Kreinrichs. I can't pronounce that. I bought these for my scary apothecary. So that's what I'll be doing next. So yeah. There you go, guys. I'm back. I came back and I did a video. I've done a floss tube. It's been a long time since I did a floss tube. Oh, I forgot to mention, I do have these too. I have all my, I keep now, I keep my light effects floss in a different container because it's light effects. Like if I just want to pull out a color, I can just pull out a color. And then I also have my Eclat. I just like being French. Um, all the Etroit floss. I don't have these all in baggies yet because I haven't used them all, but I keep them there. And I do have some satin floss, but it's a pain to work with, so I don't have a ton of it. I really like the neon colors of the satin, though, because that is really bright and bold, and that's typically when I'll use them is when I want, like, a bright neon color. But anyway, so yeah, that's my stash, guys. That's my patterns, that's my some of my finishes that I have, and my current project. So now that I have my own special room, I might be posting more, and we'll see what happens. So if you have anything you want me to make a video on, if you just want me to do floss tubes, if of just me talking and chatting, although I don't understand why anybody would want to just hear me talk and chat. <laughs> I mean, I think some people do, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I think I'm annoying. <laughs> But yeah, so there you go, guys. If you want, if you got anything you want me to talk about or any type of project you want me to try or any questions, um, I might make a video on how I do French knots because I do them, I, I think they might actually be colonial knots. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, but yeah, I'm back, guys. How do you feel about it? I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know if I'll post every week. We'll see how it goes. Because I only want to make these because I want to make them. I don't want to make them because I feel forced to. So we'll see what happens, guys. All right. Well, if you've made it this far, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I really appreciate it. And I love you guys tons. Thanks. Bye.